The 6.5 is on the road here in Washington, D.C. at Google's Public Sector Summit. AI is a tremendous opportunity, but also amplifies the threats. Not only is there data that needs to be uh, managed differently, it's also more fractalized, it's in different places, and new data is created that provides a risk. And let's not forget AI being used as a tool to breach systems is very much uh, alive and well. And I'm here with Ron from Google Cloud to discuss these issues, but also more importantly, what Google is doing to help with those threats. Ron, welcome to the show. Great, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, first off, Google has a top to bottom full stack, all the way from even silicon and infrastructure, all the way to the application layer. Yes. Can you talk through, I think people say, hey, that's a good approach, but from a security posture, yeah. how is it more secure than let's say uh, piece parting different uh, pieces of the stack together? Well, uh, what I would say is it's not automatically more secure, but the way we've taken our approach is to say, how do we embed security at every layer of, yeah. of the way we're deploying our software and our tools and services. And what that means is starting foundationally with our core infrastructure, which is what allows us to do high speed, high, high performance computing, the, build the, uh, the underlying network infrastructure that allows us to move tremendous amounts of data around the world at sub-second speeds. That, you know, building that in a secure manner and then building on top of that in layers um, allows us to have confidence at each step of the way that what we're providing to our customers is secure and um, extremely performant. Uh, so what what that helps you avoid, obviously, is you don't have to deal with the the intersections or the interfaces of a typical um, mixed you know stack of software and hardware. Right, we're building everything from the ground up. So that gives us tremendous advantage. It's something Google's really yeah. been doing for since its inception. Right, like how do we build this planet scale computer, and how do we build it in such a way that it can it can perform, but it can also be as secure as possible. So really proud to be able to build on top of that now, the AI functionality and capabilities that, uh, again, provide us with tremendous capabilities, but um, built on that heritage and that foundation that really gives us confidence that when we provide that to our customers, yeah. it's as secure as possible. No, that's just, that just makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also it seems like having one throat to choke, uh, <laughs> it helps too. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes. Not, no f finger pointing and stuff like that. I mean, it's Google products. If you're all in, then it should make that a lot easier. That's true, but I mean, again, we also pride ourselves in, in being a very open cloud environment, meaning we want to build we want to build for everyone. Yeah. And so if you want to bring open source AI models, if you want to bring your own code, if you want to bring your own independent software capabilities, we are open to that. We have open, AI, uh, open uh, APIs. We have the ability for you to integrate with us in a secure way. So I do think yeah. what we're trying to build is the most secure platform and the most secure environment for our customers to then build on top of and really customize for their mission yeah. and their capabilities that they need. Let's move to GovClouds. Mm -hmm. There's a lot a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll call them traditional GovClouds. Yeah. How are you providing a better security posture for those with technologies like yeah. uh, GDC or, or FedRAMP High, things like that? Sure, what we looked at was, you know, candidly we were probably a, a, a half a generation behind some of the early movers in, in, in terms of of how cloud was being adopted by the public sector, right? And it really started with that, what I would call cloud 1.0 uh, for government, which was a GovCloud um, model, which was essentially build a dedicated set of infrastructure, data centers, networks, all of it, put a, put a, bu a boundary around it, put bubble wrap around it, and make it super secure, right? And then bring your commercial software into that environment. Um, that worked great for kind of first generation, especially early adoption of cloud where people were really right. worried about security and compliance. Um, when we took a look at how do we enter that market, um, we said that's kind of an outdated model for a few reasons. First of all, it's, it's not, you can't get the, the most cutting edge capabilities by definition into this separate boundary very quickly, right? It takes a lot of engineering effort and it's a much slower process. Uh, second, it doesn't scale because you've okay. got to build this, infra this dedicated infrastructure. You can't take advantage of this tremendous commercial capability that we've built out that, uh, with that I just described to you. So Google took a fundamentally different approach and said, we're going to define a software-based boundary, not a hardware-based boundary in our GovCloud, meaning we can operate a GovCloud um, and we can define that boundary in our software through cryptography, through um, you know, assured comp right. compliant controls. 
and we can bring the best of what Google is innovating and bring that into that environment almost immediately. And we know we can do it securely. We've proven that to the government now. Um, and so we think that that is kind of the 2.0 iteration of what cloud for public sector really means, making to the true cutting edge frontier commercial capabilities immediately available to customer missions in a secure and compliant way. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, one of the things that I really admired about Google Cloud, mm -hmm. uh, it, even in its early days, it, it was all in on multi-cloud, yeah. right? And some people might have said, oh, well, you know, their position, of course they have to be multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. Other companies talked about multi-cloud too, they mm -hmm. just really aren't implementing it. And one area that you're doing multi-cloud is, is on security. Yes. So regardless of the cloud that they're in, you can secure it and even going to the tactical edge. Can yeah. you talk about how you do this? Today. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually a lesson I took from um, many years of working at Mandiant, right? When we were, when inevitably, no matter what the customer environment, we were working an incident or a breach response, they always had interconnects, right? Even if yeah. they were primarily a Microsoft um, a shop or primarily an Amazon shop, most complex, um, you know, infrastructure, IT infrastructure for, for customer missions involves a, a litany of tech tools, capabilities, and software. And so Google took that approach of it, and from a security perspective and said, we cannot, we, there's no universe in which a homogeneous environment right. will exist. We have to be able to say, customer can bring whatever they have to us. And this is the advantage of kind of taking more of an AI first, honestly, and kind of search first approach to security, meaning we don't really care what the technology is, as long as we can connect to it and consume the data, we will make sense of it using our, you know, our skills and capabilities and right. analytics, big data, and now AI, and we can, can, we can consume that at tremendous scale and speed and then make sense of it quickly for customers. And I, you know, as a security practitioner, if you tell me you want to feed me application security logs, great. If you want to mm -hmm. feed me firewall logs, great. If you want to feed me Amazon logs, awesome. If you want to feed me Azure logs, I'll take it all. And so we've, from the beginning of our journey with how we thought about applying Google to security capabilities to customer mission sets, right. that's, that's, our, that's been our approach. And I think it's starting to pay tremendous dividends with our customers because they're, under, they're finally getting to see the power when you can bring all that data uh, into a central um, analytic engine and, and do it at scale. You don't have to make these trade-offs that a lot right. of organizations have to do today with traditional SIMs where I might not be able to consume all the log data I want to, or I might not be able to parse it properly. We can do all that for you and provide you with tremendous insights and actionable intelligence very, very quickly. So the reality is, I mean, like enterprises are all multi-cloud, mm -hmm. at government agencies are, are multi-cloud too. And what you've illustrated here that I hadn't thought of fully mm. was the benefit of pulling all that data yeah. from all those clouds in to give you a better idea of what is going on right. so you know the next best action uh, to take. Yeah, absolutely. And and if you fast forward to where we're going now and the things we're, we're actually announcing at, at, at the summit here, we're going beyond the absorb and, and analyze and make sense of the data and we're moving into, okay, now I want to take action on the data. So now yes. I have this interconnected system, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, I can go on-prem as well. I can take that intelligence, what I learned from a threat actor or what I'm seeing in the environment as threat, and then I can apply agent, agentic capabilities to it and say, okay, now go out and do something about that. You know, take, take a system that looks like it has malware on it and isolate that system or remove that malware from that system and do it with automation yeah. where I don't have to necessarily have a human in the loop or I've predefined these course of actions from a security perspective. And so now I've got the full loop of ingest yeah. and action across your entire stack, which is really, really powerful. One question, mm -hmm. or many questions I get on you know, the thought of getting ahead of it, mm -hmm. ahead of the game with security is, yeah. hey, just when you think you're ahead, uh, the bad guys are, are, are pretty much right there. Yes. Does Mandy and IR plus agents give you the capability to stay ahead for longer? Or am I looking at, or am I asking the wrong question about that? I don't think it's the wrong question. I don't think it's a, it's necessarily a case of longer. It's a, it's a better, faster, more effective, right? As these systems scale and as we have customers who are applying more capabilities in these environments, we have to be able to scale security with it. So in my mind, it's not necessarily, it is definitely staying about ahead of the threats and that's understanding what threat actors are doing, how they're pivoting, what they're building, what they're targeting. 
all that intelligence is hugely valuable. But then what do you do about it, right? And that that becomes a um, it becomes a two factor game. It's a it's a speed game. You got to get out in the environment and either you know prevent those um, vulnerabilities from from right. being um, you know being taken advantage of by threat actors, and or if you do miss something, you have to have the the speed. Uh, and, and accuracy to get to that problem and isolate it before it becomes a major issue in your environment. So both of those things we've done through human expansion, through right. adding more and more analysts and more and more experts. You tap out on that or you, I mean, you, you've seen the reports, right? Our, thre- our threats, the threats facing the United States today are employing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of really smart people targeting us yes. and they're employing AI to the problem set. So we have to stay ahead of that. And we have to be able to give um, the defenders the advantage back uh, in that in that battle space. Yeah, I mean, nation state budgets mm-hmm. that that have gone into that. That's exactly. a relatively recent uh, a recent thing. Mm-hmm. And then you layer on top of that what you can do with some of the best AI. Yes. Uh, to come after that um, is going to keep keep you innovating and securing this country for a long time. Absolutely, absolutely true. Yep, and and we're here for it. We're 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 obsessed about the mission. We want to again. We want to take all these these great innovations that that Google is applying now, especially in the AI space, and make them available and make them useful for our defenders. Yeah, the country appreciates what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing, and I appreciate your time. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ron. It's been great. This is Patrick Borhead here at the Google Public Sector Summit here in Washington D.C talking about security in the age of AI. Hit that subscribe button, tune into all of our Google Cloud content out there. Have a nice night.